Right, okay, all I'm going to ask you to do with this then, Yon, we had looked through some different books, potentially we could read through, and you chose this one, which was... Holes. Holes. Okay, and what I'd like you to do then, starting off on the first page, is just to read out loud as nice and clear as you can, please. There is no lake at Camp Green Lake. There once was a very large lake here, the largest lake in Texas. That was over a hundred years ago. Now it was just a dry, flat wasteland. And then? There used to be the town of Green Lake as well. The town shriveled and dried up along with the lake and and the people who lived there. And then? During the summer, the, day, the daytime temperature hovers around 95 degrees in the shade if you can find any shade. There's not much shade in the big dry lake. There, the only trees are two old oaks on the eastern edge of the lake. A hummock, a hummock is stretched between the two trees and a log cabin stands behind that. The campers are f forbidden to lie in the ha on, in the hammock. It's it belongs to the warden. The warden owns the shade out on the lake. Rattlesnakes and scorpions find shade under rocks and in the holes dug by the campers. That's fantastic reading so far. Yeah, well done. Are you happy to carry on and do some more? Right. Thank you. Okay. Here's a good rule to remember about rattlesnakes and scorpions. If you don't bother them, they won't bother you. Usually, being bitten by a scorpion or even a rattlesnake is not the worst thing that can happen to you. You won't die, usually. Sometimes a camper will try to be bitten by a scorpion or even a small rattlesnake. Then he will get to spend a day or two to recover in his tent instead of having to dig a hole out on the lake. But you don't want to be bitten by a yellow spotted lizard. That's the worst thing that can happen to you. You will die a slow and painful death, always. If you get bitten by a yellow spotted lizard, you might as well go into the shade of the oak trees and lie on the hammock. There is nothing anyone can do to you anymore. Fantastic. And you're willing to read this next page as well. Please go on. The reader is probably asking, why would anyone go to the Camp Green Lake? Most ca um, campers weren't given a choice. Camp Green Lake is a camp for bad boys. If you take a, a bad boy and make him dig a hole every day in the hot sun, it will turn him into a good boy. That was what some people thought. Stanley Yelnuts was given a choice. To, the judge said, you may go to jail or you may go to Camp Green Lake. Stanley, Stanley was from a poor family. He had never been to a camp before. Well done. Are you happy to stop there? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Joanne. Well done. Mm -hmm. Okay. You all right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Right. Got the last bit coming up. I want you to do some writing if you're happy to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you're free. Do you want to write with a pencil yes. or one of those pens? He's going to have a pencil. You know, the pencil. Fantastic. Okay. What I'm going to ask you to do then are three things for me. Okay. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is some writing where I say a sentence out to you. Okay. And I'm going to ask you to write down. I said I was confused by a piece of paper. Now. What it is that I said. Okay. So I'll say the sentence out in full, then I'll split it up into the different sections to make it a bit easier to remember. Okay? And it's going to be a bit of a nonsense sentence, so don't worry mm -hmm. about it making sense or not. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and the sentence I'm going to ask you to write down will be The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy red dog So shall I start that again and split it up a little bit? Mm. So the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy red dog. That's fantastic, well done. Okay, the second thing I'm going to ask you to do is to do some copywriting where you're going to open the book we just read through at random at any page and I'm going to ask you for two minutes to copy down as much as you can onto your piece of paper. Okay. Are you happy to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can open that up at any page at random. Okay, so which page are we doing? 110 or 111? 111. There we are. Right, so if I hold that open for you, it'll be a little bit easier. Whenever you're ready, buddy, you can start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you can start there if you want, buddy. Okay. Well done. Happy? Yeah. Okay. Right. The final bit I'm going to ask you to do, and again, thank you very much for agreeing to do this, Johan. Earlier on, then, you were coming up with some fantastic ideas for a short story that you were going to write, and you drew some pictures mm. of two characters. Can you remind me who those characters were? 
Bob, Bob and Elvis the Blobfish. So we had Bob the Blob and Elvis the Blobfish. Okay, and you yeah. told me you had a really good idea for a story for those two characters. Um, Bob the Blob was, um, was really sad all the time and okay. he always messed stuff up. And um, Elvis the Blobfish was really famous and he has like lights and stuff and he had like Elvis's proper hair. Okay, that sounds fantastic. So, can you think of a title you could give your story? I don't know. I don't know. The Blobfish Duo. The Blobfish Duo, well, that sounds great to me. Okay, so on your paper, if you want to leave, say, one, two, three, four lines, do you want to write your head in there, so the Blobfish Duo? Okay. Do. Okay, what have you got so far, buddy? Okay, what we need, we need another letter in the middle of those two you've got there. So you've got the D and you've got the O, and we need the letter U in the middle. Fantastic, well done. Right, I'm going to give you a few minutes, and if you're happy, to write down as much of your story about Elvis and Bob the blob as you can. Are you happy to do that? Yeah. Fantastic. Right. I leave that over to you then, buddy. Um. really well so far you on.
final 30 seconds to see how much you can fit in. Stop whenever you're ready. <laughs> That's good timing, isn't it? Fantastic, well done. So, what are you going to put in that space there then? Picture. Can you do a picture? Do you do a picture quickly? Okay. With a big grumpy looking mouth, is that Bob? Yes. So what's Bob holding there then? A happy meal. It's got a happy meal. <laughs> we can have a picture of Elvis to finish off as well. Yeah. Elvis the blobfish. And what's Elvis doing in this picture then? Singing. Is he entertaining the people that are eating? Yeah. No, he's not entertaining the people that are eating. No. No. A completely different place. Fair Just as here left to go. There you go. Fantastic. Thank you very much, you one. You're all done, buddy. You're a free man. <laughs> You can go home. Oh, that's Bill. Thank you really, very much for today. You've been awesome. If you want to hear that, go on. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Ewan. Well done, buddy. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Don't forget, you're still plugged in. Within the video, we demonstrated some examples of informal assessment activities which were conducted with the learner. These informal assessment activities included a miscue analysis of reading, free writing, copywriting and dictation writing, and also some activities linked to assessing underlying phonological awareness, for example, the pupil's perception and ability to recognise rhyme.